Blessed be everyone. Welcome to my YouTube channel today. I have a book review and I'm also going to talk a little bit about magical oils because I love oils. <laughs> but before we dive in, my name is Sandra. I'm the author of Crafting Your Wiccan Path. If you want to know more about Wicca, witchcraft, magic, tarot and shadow work, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you don't miss any videos. If you want to become a good spellcaster, download my free PDF. It's called the Spellcaster Checklist. It gives you a bit of a checklist, as it says, to know what to think about and what to do when you're preparing for a spell so the link is in the description field below this video so today i'm doing a book review on a book of magical oils recipe and it's called the complete formulary of magical oils and the author is celeste rain hellstab beautiful book lots of oil recipes in this book but before we dive into the review of the book I wanted to talk a little bit about oils now people use essential oils and fragrant oils for all sorts of things uh, usually it's to improve mood because it does uh, we know that scent does improve our mood it changes our psychology a little bit and it can help reduce stress that can help invigorate us and feel more motivated and more energetic they can be used for healing they can be used for skin and hair care the essential oils can be used for cleaning so cleaning your home or cleaning yourself <laughs> and also holistic medicine as well so they're used a lot in just everyday non-magical ways but one of the main two ways was well two but the two ways that the magical oils can be used in magic is by anointing ourselves and anointing and dressing candles, as well as in baths and potions. So some of the ways that we in the magical arena use oils is to anoint ourselves. And this anointing of ourselves not only creates a mood because of the scent of the oils it also helps us take on the energies of the oil and that's like a cleansing feeling and also to vibrate and resonate at a sacred uh, vibration or a sacred frequency when we're using certain oils to anoint ourselves it also psychologically prepares us for a ritual or prepares us for creating a sacred space or creating a spell. Other ways that we use essential oils or even fragrant oils in magic is to anoint candles. So we will anoint a candle to dress the candle as we call it and that's dressing the candle with the energy of our intention and while focusing on our intention we're also anointing the candle at the same time. We can use oils in magical baths and we can also use oils in potions. So not potions that you would drink, but potions that you might use to dress a candle or put in a bath or anoint yourself with, or to put on talismans or wards, or to put a little bit in with your ingredients of a magical pouch or a magical jar or witch's bottle or something like that. So we use oils a fair bit. And I've created a new course at the moment. It's called The Witch's Guide to Magic. And you can find out more information about that now because there's a link in the description field below this video for how you can enroll in that course. And what I've done in that course is created spells that use a combination often of candles, crystals and oils. And it's not that you have to use them all together it's just that I like those three things so I put them together <laughs> but just to understand that we use herbs whether there is the herbs themselves or the essential oils a lot in magic because they are so helpful to our aim and helpful to putting helping us be in the right frame of mind to focus on what it is that we're doing our magic for 
When it comes to magic, the oils are used because they have a certain vibrational frequency and so they'll resonate corresponding to our intentions. So when we talk about correspondences, we're looking for something of a tangible nature that corresponds to our intention. So we're trying to make the intention physical by using herbs or crystals or oils or some other symbolic thing. They are symbolic as well. So the, they have associations. So for example, cinnamon is associated with money a lot and wealth a lot. Uh, rose, of course, is associated with romance. So by these associations, we, we match them to our spell intentions. They have an emotional impact on us, so they help us become more congruent with our intention, so that they'll help tweak the emotions so that we're feeling more into the wish fulfilled. So if you're doing a love spell, for example, and you use rose oil, it's going to help you get more into that vibration of love. And when you're being in the wish fulfilled, you're applying your attention and you're being in the moment with experiencing in your imagination a scenario of you and your significant other, you're, and you've got the rose oil going, then you're really, really in that energy of love and romance. We anoint ourselves, as I said, with the oils, and you may find that some, in some spells you will even anoint yourself with an oil potion, for example, as part of a spell, or you might anoint a petition, so a piece of paper that has uh, your spell written on it or your intention written on it is what's called a petition. And you can anoint those as well with your magical oils. And just create a sacred space with the aroma of these oils. They can really help take you out of your mundane workaday world into the sacred space. So they're wonderful to use when you come home from work, for example, or you've been out shopping and you've been in the, the rat race and you come back into your magical space. So <laughs> this is where this book comes in. <laughs> This book does have a lot of oil recipes and the oil recipes uh, cover everything, pretty so many, so many things. And even within the categories in this book are oil potions that you wouldn't think of, <laughs> but they're there. And uh, so it's really helpful to you if you love working with oils. Most of the oils, in this book are pretty easy to access and she talks about how she will also use fragrant fragrant oils so the fragrant oils are different to the essential oils essential oils are from the actual plant itself they're not synthetic and they cost a lot more because of that and some plants cost more than others because you have to use more of that plant uh, in order to get the same amount of oil. So for example, rosemary oil is a pretty inexpensive oil because it's really easy to extract the rosemary essence and scent from rosemary leaves. Rosemary grows, it's pretty, it's almost a weed in that it pretty much grows anywhere. Rose, however, to just extract a small amount of oil, you have to have so many roses that it just costs more to make rose oil than it does to make rosemary oil. So when it comes to using scent in your magic, you might want to try the synthetic oils, which are often smell the same or pretty similar. They won't vibrate at the same frequency as the actual plant. So that's true. They're not the real plants and they're not vibrating at that plant's living energy that's come from that plant that's been extracted from a living thing but they do work in the sense that they can help with your mood they can help put you into that sense of smelling a rose and being in a romantic environment so they can help with the psychological aspect and so if you don't have the money to buy essential oils 
you can start by using the fragrant oils. I did when I first started doing magic. I didn't have the resources to buy essential oils. There wasn't a lot of them around either, but there are a lot of the fragrant oils, and so I used them in my magic. So some of the things that you'll find in this book are all of these oils for, you know, love and attraction, emotional and physical healing, uh, even the chakras. There's uh, psychic and uh, spiritual oils. There's oils for your home. There's oils for money, of course, job and financial. There's oils for luck and legal. There's oils for gambling, oils for gods and goddesses, uh, saints and angels, hexing, banishing and uncrossing, uh, the mother moon, uh, sabbats and rituals, planetary oils, as well as zodiacal oils, I think I would, as well as zodiacal oils. And then at the end, there's a part on the magical properties of carrier oils, which often you don't hear a lot about the carrier oils themselves. So that would be like your almond oil or your apricot kernel oil, whatever you're blending the essential oils with. The essential oil profiles and the popular oils. There's a little bit in here on magical intent, which is nice to see. Because a lot of the older spell books don't talk so much on magical intent. And of course your correspondence charts. And also bibliography in here too, which is quite extensive. So that if you want to go and find out some more books on oils, then if this isn't enough for you, <laughs> then uh, you can do that as well. So it's a really comprehensive book and I really like a lot of the recipes in here. Of course, I'm probably never going to use all of them and you're probably going to find that there's maybe just a, a few, a handful from each category that you would use over and over again because you love them so much or just simply because the ingredients are easier to obtain with some of the blends than some of the other blends. Oh, and another thing, uh, it's also mentioned in here the types of oils you wouldn't use simply because they're they're toxic or they're they're not uh, good for you to use if you're pregnant for example or that kind of thing so it's a lovely book and uh, I have a link to it in the description field below this video to the amazon.com uh, if you want to buy it on Amazon that's where I got mine from uh, really really lovely book so I totally recommend it and with this new course that I was telling you about it has uh, now just been released it's a five module course it's a do-it-yourself course so you don't have to do it in any particular time frame and it's not necessarily a linear course either it's the modules are divided up into categories of love and relationships prosperity and success protection and defense and uh, health and wellness so that if you're w wanting to focus on your career for example you can just go straight to that module and indulge yourself in that module and if you find you need help with any of the others because they do cross over sometimes then you can then start to look at the other modules and it just shows you to the difference between love and relationship magic and even within yourself there may be differences for you you might be great at doing prosperity magic, but really lousy when it comes to love magic. And through these modules, you'll learn why. <laughs> why you're good at that and not so good at the other thing and how you can become better at the one you're not so good at. <laughs> the focus is really on helping you cast successful spells. So the spells are very simple, very, very simple, because the emphasis isn't on the spell itself. The emphasis is on you doing the spell and how you approach the spell. So that's teaching you to be a good spellcaster without having to use a whole lot of resources in order to be successful at it. So it's called The Witch's Guide to Magic. There's a link in the description field below this video. If you like the video, hit the like button, share it with your friends. Don't forget to subscribe. I am Sandra from mysterywitchschool.com. Blessed be.